There is a predominant law of the universe and life that very few people are aware of. Now, those in elite circles, high societies, and so on are definitely aware of it, and they know how to act in alignment with it in order to get what they want. And they have successfully kept this knowledge hidden for generations because of how life-changing it could be when discovered and applied in one's life. And unfortunately, when it comes to the parasitic elite class, not all of the elite class, but the parasitic elite, they are after power and control. And so they've suppressed or kept hidden many of the ideas um, and philosophies and action steps that would allow people to experience way more freedom or tap into their reality creation abilities. However, in this video, you're going to be learning about one of the most crucial laws of the universe. In fact, it is the most crucial one to understand and apply. Becoming aware of this, practicing moving in accordance to it, and staying consistent with it will absolutely 100% change your life for the better. And this is a law. It is immutable. It is in fact working in everyone's life at this very moment, but unfortunately in a more negative way in most people's lives because of how most people have been conditioned. But if you want to start taking back control of your life, if you want to start experiencing the freedom, abundance, clarity, passion, peace, and love you deep down know is available to you, then I would really invite you to watch on and really pay attention to this video. Because in this video, I'll be going over what this law is and more importantly how to mold your life in a way that works with it to your benefit. So let's jump into it. So simply put this principle is called the law of balance and harmony. However, it is not probably what you're thinking when I say those words when I say balance and harmony. Um, it's something that goes a little bit deeper than just what those words can really convey. You see, life is always trying to maintain balance and harmony, but again, maybe not in the ways that you think, because you might think, well, how can that be the case? How can it, especially with that word harmony, always be wanting to maintain harmony? Because I look out at the world and all these atrocities are happening that I'm looking at, and this thing happened to me, et cetera, et cetera. And what it's really doing is maintaining balance and harmony harmony on all three planes of existence, and it means balance and harmony between the spiritual, mental, and physical planes, and I'll explain what that means. And just if you are unaware as a human being, as a spiritual being in a human body, if you want to put it in that way, you have three planes of existence that you are operating on at all times. You have the physical one, which most people are down with. They understand, oh, I'm in a physical body. I'm in this physical world. And some people cut themselves off there. They're like, well, that's all I am. I'm just physical. There's only the physical world and my five senses, etc. Then there's the mental plane of existence. And some people, you know, a lot more people than what we're going to go over on the third plane of existence existence, but they'll buy into the mental one. Like, oh, I have thoughts. I can picture things in this thing I have called a mind. Okay, so there's a mental plane of existence where I have thoughts, I can envision things, etc. And we also have a spiritual plane of existence. This is what connects us to that which we actually are, um, to divinity, if you want to say it that way, or source, or the all. Essentially, this is also the energetic realm. This is the emotional realm, energy in motion. And as a human, you are operating from all three of these planes at the same time simultaneously. So you're not just moving in the physical plane and moving through time and space, but you are also doing things in the mental plane of existence through what you're thinking about and those projections you're sending out there. And as the Kabbalion and Hermetic Wisdom would say, everything is mental, the all is mind. And you also have a spiritual plane of existence, which is energetic vibration frequency. And again, that connection to what we call source, or we can call it infinite intelligence, or we can call it the all. Some people call it God, whatever you want to call it. And the thing to understand is that all of these planes, they are not separate. They are not acting on their own away from each other. They're actually all in correspondence with each other. If you've ever heard the saying, as above, so below, and as below, so above, that's where this comes from. It's called the principle of cause and effect, and it happens on all three planes. And what that means is one thing happens on one plane, it will influence and affect the other planes of existence. They always line up eventually. They're in 
correspondence. And so keep that in mind as we go through what the law of balance is, how this operates in your life, that you are essentially a three-part being of mind, spirit, and body, mental, spiritual, and physical, and they all work together. They're all in correspondence. They are all connected. Now, to just give you a very simple example of how this works, let's say you think thoughts of negativity a lot. That's whether consciously and unconsciously, probably unconsciously, um, and then your conscious thoughts will most likely follow suit. But let's say you do what we call catastrophize, which means you think of the worst possible thing that could happen when you're focusing on something. Oh, I'm going to go do this. And what if I spill my coffee? And what if that person rejects me, et cetera, et cetera. So let's say you're doing that on the mental plane. Let's say because of that, because you're thinking that way on the spiritual plane, emotionally, you're feeling pretty terrible. You're not feeling great at all. And so the mental and emotional plane are in line there. And what's going to happen is you're going to get the effect of those causes on the physical plane. You'll notice that someone who complains all the time or thinks negatively all the time, very rarely has positive things, what we consider positive things happen to them, rarely has amazing opportunities coming in, rarely has like uplifting people in their life, et cetera, et cetera. And some people go, well, that's, that's fairy tale thinking. This, this, thing, this stuff doesn't exist. It absolutely does. Because there are people, for example, who will do the exact opposite. They will think positively, genuinely, heartfeltly, if that's a word, most of the time. They will feel good most of the time. Doesn't mean they always do, but most of the time they've trained themselves to do that authentically and genuinely. And you see this kind of person who has all this abundance in their life and all this love. They have all these opportunities coming in. It seems like they got the mind is touch in a good way, not where they turn their loved ones into gold, but ultimately like everything they touch turns to gold in a good way. They seem to be incredibly lucky. And there's a reason because what you're doing on the mental and spiritual planes will have correspondence in the physical and will influence what we call physical matter reality. And so balance and harmony doesn't mean positive or negative. You have to understand that the universe, God source, whatever you want to call it is neutral. When it comes to this stuff, it doesn't operate from a moralistic uh, viewpoint. It just operates from a law of balance and harmony and will give you the like kind, whatever harmonizes whatever with whatever you're doing on those planes of existence. So you think negatively all the time. The thing that harmonizes that on the physical plane is like kind stuff. You feel kind of crappy all the time in lower level emotions. The harmony to that on the physical plane is the equivalent of that. It's things going wrong, a drop, like living a drama based life. That's the balance to those things happening on those other two planes. You will get the balancing of that on the physical plane. You will get the harmonizing of that, the same key, the same tone on the physical plane. It doesn't mean harmony in the sense of like everything's so peaceful and everything. That's not what we're talking about. That's not what that means in this context. Unless of course you are thinking that way, feeling that way, and then it will harmonize in that way on your physical. But when we're saying balance and harmony, that's what we mean. Harmony in this case, isn't necessarily positive. It just will match up and correspond to what you're doing on these other planes of existence. Another crucial component that pieces this together is something I say on the channel a lot, but the outer world, which represents your physical follows the inner world. The spiritual and mental planes of existence represent the inner world. This is your thoughts. These are your visualizations, your imaginings, things that your imagination, which is such an, a powerful tool, your intention, you know, your attention where you put that on what you put that in your mind's eye, your emotions, energy in motion, what you're entertaining most of the time, the outer world is going to start following that. Now, a lot of people think this isn't the case because they think positively once, or they have maybe even one day where for, uh, for the most of the day, they were positive and things didn't change because the physical is a denser rate of vibration than energy or thoughts. Thoughts are instantaneous. I could tell you, think of a pink elephant and you will think it. I will say, think of whatever, think of an orange that's um, red or an orange that's um, violet colored. You would be able to think of it in an instant. If I did something like, Hey, I want you to close your eyes, take a deep breath and then imagine a pet that you absolutely love. You can actually do this right now. If I said, close your eyes, and I want you to think of a time that just filled you with glee. Did that change the way you feel? If you truly connected to it, absolutely. So also instantaneous. 
but it's not instantaneous with these things coming into the physical because it's a denser rate of vibration. It takes more time. So you can't just think a good thought once, feel a good feeling once. It's what do you think about and what do you feel most of the time? That is what's going to create a balance of either what we call positive or negative on the physical plane. A harmony of what harmonizing with positive stuff or negative stuff. And again, I'm using these very general terms where we can insert many different things on that spectrum, but just to keep it simple, it will either harmonize and balance with the positive stuff that you've been maintaining in the inner world, or if it's negative stuff, it'll do the same. It doesn't care which. Now, I just wanna make a point that this is why so many of the people that actually want to control you and want power over you, um, the, again, parasitic, elite class, not all of the elites, but the parasitic elite class. This is why when you look at so much of their programming, the school system and many different things, their goal is to keep you in lower levels of emotion. Their goal is to not really stimulate your imagination or your creative thinking or your ability to have, you know, discernment. Why? Because they want you in those lower levels because they know they can't actually control you but they can teach you how to keep yourself in bondage and you'll keep running these patterns which actually keeps recreating a reality that keeps you in bondage. But the trick is you have to actually keep doing these things to stay there. When you start moving differently, a new future is available. In fact, a new future is always available. But this is why, you know, most programming and things sway on the negative side. News is always negative. You know, a lot of people, kids and people who come out of school don't benefit from it. And the reason for it is because they want to disempower you, which literally means removing your power, taking away the power, keeping you in a low level of energy. They don't want you empowered because you're harder to control. And empowered would be someone who has a lot of power, a lot of energy, is higher on the consciousness the scale. That is their biggest fear because then they can't maintain control and influence over you because your discernment and ability to choose goes through the roof when you're empowered. And you're going to be learning some of how to do that today. And when it comes to the law of balance, when you have a lot of power, you're empowered from the inner place. And also you gain more power the higher up the consciousness scale you go. We can show Hawking scale. So the higher up you are, the more literal energy you have at your disposal. This is a real thing. The lower you go down, the more dense the vibration. The higher you go up on here, the more... Um, lighter the vibration, more powerful the vibration, which means you have much more to work with, which means your creation abilities go way up. And it also means that you're then going to start balancing and harmonizing with this level of energy and that level of thought. So this is what the law of balance essentially is, but it's not nearly enough to know this. We are just scratching the surface. So now let's go over why it is crucial to cultivate the inner world First, you have to do this. How long it takes for things to show up in the physical as you're doing this and some powerful tools that will make all of this easier. Reality is mainly energy and empty space. It is mainly potential. You know, I say this a lot on the channel, this kind of um, percentage, but it's, it bears repeating over and over again to let it sink in. But reality is ultimately 99.999999% energy or empty space, while 0.000001% is physical reality matter. Now, that doesn't mean the physical is unimportant, but it's important to understand that most of what makes up what we call reality is non-physical and is from the inner world. Most of it is the spiritual and mental plane of existence. And the reason I emphasize this is because if that's what the physical reality comes from, if that is what most of reality is, doesn't it benefit us to focus a lot on that, get those two areas right, so that we can reproduce its like kind in the physical. So we can balance and have the physical balance out and have those balancing and harmonizing forces come in to reproduce what we're doing on the inner world. And this is why it's so important to understand this. And that's because you're what's in, call, uh, in what's called infinite action, which means you're essentially always in process. You see, you are always sending out a signal, we like to call it, from your brain, from your energy, from your thoughts, out into the universe. You are sending that out 24 seven. You are in infinite action. And that means what you're feeling and what you're thinking is essentially 
influencing your reality all of the time. Now, this doesn't mean you need to always be feeling good or you failed or you need to always think a certain way you failed, but what you want to aim for is to feel good most of the time and to, you'll, and to understand that you'll get what you think about most of the time. Why? Because feeling good most of the time is creating a certain level of energy on the spiritual plane of existence. Thinking about what you want or visualizing that dream life or whatever else it is for you most of the time is recreating that on the mental plane of existence. These are the two planes of existence that make up 99, again, 0.9 plus percent of reality and ultimately are the main factors in what's going to come about in your physical. And this is why we want to think and feel about what we want most of the time because that's what's going to be reproduced in the physical because you are in infinite action. There is no switching this off and saying, hey universe, hey source, hey whatever, can you switch this off because I want to think very negatively, I want to remain in my vices, I want to X, Y, and Z. And again, it's not right or wrong if you do those things. Just understand, this is not a moral thing. It's just about what is it you actually want and what can you do to bring that about. And this is essentially how it works. And this is what's so crazy about it because you are so powerful that you can literally put yourself in a place of bondage if you're feeling, thinking, um, and then reproducing that in the physical most of the time, things of fear, lower levels of consciousness, thinking about what you don't want all the time, catastrophizing. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it is because you are feeling it, thinking that way, that's bringing these things about. And again, the parasitic elite class plays to this, conditions people based on this because that's what they want. Now, you may be wondering how long does it take for the balancing forces and harmonizing forces to recreate and balance out what's happening on your uh, spiritual and mental planes into the physical. Well, there's actually a scientific term known as the quantum to Newtonian transition point. Quantum representing the inner world, energetic, and Newtonian representing the physical. The quantum to Newtonian transition point. So when it transitions from the quantum world into the physical, into the 3D, into the five sense world that we're all so familiar with. And you may be surprised at how long this takes. Now, ultimately, the quantum to Newtonian transition point states this, that six six to eight weeks of concentrated particle flow in a particular direction will lead to dramatic changes in the physical world. And I want you just to take note of a few key words there. Again, it is focused particle flow. It can't be stop, start, up and down, one step forward, one step back. It is focused particle flow. That means being in a certain energy or like kind energies for six to eight weeks most of the time. That means thinking certain thoughts most of the time. That is what will result in the dramatic changes. But six to eight weeks only of that, and if you succeed in doing that, it also, makes you, it also means you get better at it. You create more neural connections and habits to help you do it and repeat the process time and time again. But this is an actual thing that states six to eight weeks of concentrated particle flow, meaning maintaining the inner world in a certain direction, maintaining the spiritual and mental planes of existence in a certain direction will reproduce dramatic changes in the physical world, will balance out in the physical. Now, there's another crucial part when it comes to the law of balance. And this is one of the most critical parts when it comes to it. And, and this is where a lot of people trip up because they might be a few weeks into it. Let's say they've been doing it. Let's say they've been doing it a little stop start, but for the most part, they've been following through. So it's taken a little longer than six to eight weeks to get the traumatic changes. But let's say for two months, they've been really doing it. They're getting little manifestations here and there. And you know, good things are starting to happen. It's not quite dramatic as of yet because not enough energy has been built, but they're getting there. This is what trips up a lot of people. Little good things come in and then boom, something so-called bad happens in their life. Some chaos comes up. Something like, you know, like they get fired from their job or a relationship ends or they lose a bunch of money or something usually happens in the physical or a bunch of emotions that they didn't even know was there start to come up. Essentially some chaos comes up and people ask the question, well, wait a second. I thought good things were supposed to happen when I do this. Why is all this perceived negativity, these perceived, this perceived chaos coming up? And it's actually a very crucial part of the law of balance and this process. It's called the law of continuity. And so let me dive into this. And so I want to make sure you understand the law of continuity so that not only can you expect that this kind of thing is going to happen, the storm, the chaos, but you know what to do in the face of it.
You see, when you're changing radio stations, let's say you're going again from, we'll use our old example, I think it was 91.1 uh, to 101.1. So let's say you're on 91.1. Now you change the station to 101.1. The songs on these stations represent physical manifestations or things changing, right? Physical manifestations typically take longer. Meaning even though you tune yourself into the station of 101.1, you will still get songs from 91.1 uh, or 90.1, whatever I said, it's on screen. You will still start to receive songs from that because it takes a little bit of time for things to transition into the physical because of the law of continuity. Now, the best way I've ever heard this described is to imagine things like this. Imagine you are a, an actor on the set of a movie and this is the movie of your life. So you're in a movie, it's the movie of your life. Now you're on a, a certain floor on a building that has many different scripts that could potentially be the script of your movie. And so whatever floor you're currently on, let's say you're on the second floor, is currently the script of the movie you're currently acting in. So let's say it's a drama script and most of your life has been in drama because you're on the drama script floor and the script writers on that floor write a drama script. They're not gonna write anything other than a drama script. So how do we change our lives if the script writers are going to just do their jobs and write a drama on that floor? Well, our job is to get in the elevator and push up and go to a higher floor. Now, the way we do this is in the inner world. That's the inner work of choosing a new room in the art gallery, of doing the, the inner work on the spiritual and mental planes of existence. However, what happens when you go up the floor is the script writers on the floor you're currently on give you a copy of the script, so the drama script, that you take up with you as you go up the floors. And so let's say now you're on the fourth floor and the fourth floor is more of a comedy and adventure and kind of a hero's journey, not a drama soap opera that you were in current, uh, before. And so now you're on this floor energetically, you hand the script over to the new script writers and their job is to now write you a story that is again, more adventurous, more fun, more playful, uh, more opulent, whatever else it is based on whatever it is in that floor. And the higher you go up on these floors, by the way, the more high conscious the script the more higher energy the script. However, the script writers cannot take what was in your previous script and just throw it out. They have to continue from the script you were already acting out in your movie. Meaning you hand over the drama script and they have to start finding ways to write out the current things in your life that don't fit the kind of script that they write. So if you have a drama script, for example, and in that drama script that you were playing as the actor, um, as your character in your life, you had a boss that actually fit that script really nicely. You didn't like them, they were a pain in the butt and they created a lot of drama in your life. Well, in order for you to adhere to this new script, they might have to get you fired. They may have to somehow take this boss out of your life or other people that create drama in your life or at least lessen the time that you spend with these people. It has to be written out of the script. And so there is a delay where things need to be removed. And this is when the chaos and the storm ensues. This is why when people go on this journey, they, you hear a lot of people losing their job or losing some money or losing certain relationships. Why? Because those things are being written out of the script because you now have a much higher conscious script you're working with. But certain things need to be removed in order for you to start bringing in these new things. And again, this is the law of continuity, but here's what happens using this same analogy. Here's what happens to most people. They go in the elevator. So again, they're going into the inner world. They're, they're using the law of balance to their advantage. They're, those first few weeks, they're doing well and they're going up in the elevator and they get to this new floor and then the chaos ensues. The law of continuity starts taking effect and people get scared. So what do they do? They hop right back in the elevator and they go back to the drama floor, which is where they're actually comfortable. Because to go up the floor, you have to leave your comfort zone. And once you leave that comfort zone, certain things within that zone start to get removed to create this new level of comfort zone, this new reality that adheres to the new script on this new floor you're on. What should you do if you wanna allow the law of balance to operate in your life in a way that serves you in your highest? 
You embrace the bends and you embrace the chaos. When the storm comes up, so long as you know you're in the right direction, you're following the direction of your heart, of your soul, of your high, whatever you want to call it, your higher self, then stay in the room. Go up the elevator and stay in the room. Stay the course. Embrace the bends in the river. Embrace the chaos and the storm. Stay grounded in the face of it and the storm will clear and bring you a whole new level of new circumstances, opportunities, events, and people. And I've seen this happen in too many people's lives uh, to not see that this is 100% what happens. I've taken people through high-level coaching where we have done this. You know, I've had clients, for example, who have lost their job, and then two weeks later were offered a better one that was much more aligned and for higher pay. And this is a very common theme. You know, I've seen people who have lost some money because they gave up something that was making them money, but then pursued what they actually wanted to pursue and then made more than they could have ever imagined or would have ever in that other one. In fact, that's one that happened to myself where I had a business that was doing really well and then went, this isn't aligned anymore. I have to give it up and I'm not going to be able to stay on that new floor. If I don't, I finally did. And then my new business started to take off and started making way more and doing so much more for me than the old business. And so this is the law of continuity that you have to keep in mind when the law of balance happens. And this absolutely will take effect again, because you're moving to a new floor, a new level that comes with a completely different script. You're trying to live on a completely different frequency, which means the stuff on the old frequency that aligns to that old frequency that aligns to, again, maybe it's the drama frequency or the drama script has to start being cleared out. If you stick with it, again, life has to balance to meet you up here instead of you going down there. Again, life isn't concerned where you balance, it's just concerned with balancing and harmonizing. And so when you do it this way, it has to come up to meet this new vibration rather than you going down to re-meet your current physical circumstances. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you some tools that you can start working with and remember, like I mentioned earlier, the idea of infinite action. In fact, some of the things I've already gone over, you can use as tools and reminders that are going to help you on this journey. But the first thing I want to go over is what's called a mental diet. And I've gone over this before, but to me, this is one of the most crucial ones because what you feed to yourself intellectually, mentally, emotionally is so much of what you're going to create, the opportunities you're going to be uh, bringing in and the influence you are having over your inner world. And absolutely, the things you are watching, the things you are consuming mentally, the books you read, if you're even reading, and if you're not, I would really encourage you to read good books. Um, the videos you're watching, if you're watching Netflix all the time, if you're on TikTok all the time, if you're watching junk media, that is the equivalent of eating cake and pizza and junk food all of the time in your physical diet. And what happens when you eat junk food all of the time in your physical diet? And you're not exercising and you're not taking care of it. That's right. You start getting disease. You start really messing up your physical um, plane of existence. Now, this is the same for the mental and spiritual planes. Meaning if you have a junk mental diet, if most of the time or even a little bit of the time each day, you are engaging in junk media, you're watching drama based shows, you're watching shows that are about like jealousy and revenge and, and drama and oh, I can't believe this person said that and gossip and whatever else. Guess what you are consuming in your mental diet. Guess what that's going to do to you? It's going to keep you on that station and give you more of the same and cause you to send out a similar signal. And so I would implore you to be very deliberate with your mental diet and to engage with things that help you have a good one. For example, videos like this can help. Being in programs and coaching can really help too. And that's the best thing you can do because they'll keep you in it and give you the best possible information and make sure you're really adhering to this. But you can also read books. You can also listen to audios, but you should be doing this throughout the day. If you want to get good at this, this is, you don't have to do any of this, but ultimately if you want to influence your mental diet in a way that it actually serves you, you want to do this very often and throughout the day because remember, infinite action, you're always sending out that signal and what you're consuming mentally, what you're consuming through your eyes, through your ears, sensory, uh, from, through sensory data is influencing you, is influencing your inner world. You can't watch something that's at a drama level and not be influenced by that drama and then also project that drama energy out. It's, you will absolutely be influenced by it. It's called TV programming programming 
for a reason. Now, if you do wanna work with me and um, a group of dedicated uh, people who are really working towards becoming very deliberate reality creators and getting phenomenal results, you can check out the first link in my description down below that has a free case study about our reality creation program. This is not for the faint of heart. This is a deep dive intensive program for people who are ready to take this to the next level. So if that's something you actually want guidance and help with and actually start getting amazing results in, you can check that out below and potentially apply to join us. Now, speaking of mental diet, which is kind of your digital environment, we also have to talk about enhancing your physical environment. And this is a massive one because one of the biggest influences for all of us is our peers. I'm sure you've heard the saying that you will become the average of the five people you hang out with most, and it's very, very true. You see, we all give off an energy, a transmission, we all influence each other um, for the most part. And so if you're around a lot of people who are being incredibly negative, it is gonna be very hard for you to resist that no matter how much you try. You're gonna be fighting an uphill battle and you're most likely gonna be influenced by it. But at the other end of the spectrum, if you're hanging out with people who are genuinely, authentically loving their life, their Positive. You know, they look on the bright side, they go for positive scavenger hunts versus negative scavenger hunts in their life. They're, you know, appreciative for life. You're going to start being um, influenced by that. The peer group aspect is so crucial, um, which is why in our program, we have a peer group of people all going through the same work, helping each other out as they go through it. Um, but ultimately, you need to get a handle on your peer group. And all I'll recommend is to hang out with more people you know, if you know anyone who is on that more positive side. Or or go to places and join things that will help you gain access to this kind of person and to give less energy to those who are, are really negative in your life, who are complainers, who like to play the victim all the time, that kind of stuff. Again, you don't have to if you don't want to, but just understand you absolutely will be influenced if you hang around this kind of person. Again, it's not right or wrong what you choose, but you know, it is a principle of the universe, the law of the universe, you will be influenced by these people. It just depends on what kind of people you hang out with, on whether you're gonna be influenced positively or negatively. Now this also includes the rest of your physical environment, where you spend your time and energy, you know, what's in your immediate environment. So for example, uh, one simple one is you have a very cluttered and messy space, that is going to influence you. If you have something that reminds you of a lot of negative things, for example, that's gonna influence you. This is why you hear a lot of people will put affirmations in their house, they'll have like a cork board with their vision, you've probably heard of vision boards and things of this nature. And the reason for that is because when when they look at that, they're giving themselves triggers in order to think positively, to think about what they want versus what they don't want. So they're not thinking about what they don't want, to tune into their vision more and more. These are things that I do as well. You know, I have things around the house that remind me of infinite action, that remind me of my dreams and visions I'm tuning into and moving towards. I don't have anything in my space that would cause me to go in a negative direction. And so I'd recommend doing the best you can with whatever space you have, like if you have a room even, just your bedroom, making sure that's something that is coherent and organized and something that can inspire you, you know, having pictures of people that inspire you up on the walls, having things that, you, that motivate you and help put you in a good energy. Um, you know, listening to music that you really enjoy and comes from a very high vibration is another really good one because it's something in your environment you can tune into very easily to influence yourself. Next, create your own high conscious routines. When you create habits and routines around this stuff, obviously it makes it a lot easier. And just to keep it simple for now, have a morning and night routine that tunes you in into things that are going to sway the law of balance in your favor, that are going to expand your positive energy ball. This is things like meditation and journaling. It could be prayer. It could be going over your vision board. It could be visualization. It could be whatever it is for you, walking out in nature, you know, going for a walk in nature and letting that influence you. Um, you know, playing with a pet can even be a high conscious activity, having that playfulness. But have routines that you can tune into every single day that are gonna give you that energetic boost and that transition transmission of positive, high conscious energy, coherent energy, um, at least at certain parts in the day. Now, ideally, you will also have little things you can tune into throughout the day. They don't need to be routines, but maybe you find yourself needing a boost, you have something that you can do, right? For me, there's a certain song I like listening to to do this. I have certain things called amalgams and affirmations I'll tune into, um, little prayers, little meditations, little uh, pieces of breath work I'll do throughout the day as well, along with a few other tools that have taken me some time to wire in, um, but it was well worth taking that time because 
now I can go right to it to make sure I'm sending out the energy I ultimately want to create more of in my life or attract more of into my life. Now, one thing that's really going to help you if you do not have one yet is to have a vision. And the reason for this is because if you don't have that to tune into this powerful energetic vision that you've created, you've molded, you know, has mind heart coherence when you think about it, when you tune into it, um, it's going to be really hard to focus on what it is you want. And so I'd have you go watch this video next where I give you an actual formula that helps you to create a vision and also gives you some of the steps on how to move towards that vision powerfully. But having this to tune into is going to help so much in creating this powerful energy, positive energy ball in your life that the law of balance will then bring more of into your life.